vSAN 7 Update 2 offers support for file services snapshots available through API as well as PowerShell. In this demo, I have a file share called Profiles. Using the snapshot commandlets in PowerCLI 12.3, vSAN 7 Update 2, and Veeam Backup and Replication version 11, I'm able to create a backup job that uses a newly created vSAN file services snapshot as its backup source. Let's take a look at the file share currently being protected in my backup job. As we can see here, this file share has several files and folders. For the purposes of demonstrating a restore, I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these files. Now before we restore the files, let's go ahead and take a look at the SMB share currently being protected and the configuration of the backup job. Under Inventory, viewing the properties of the file share, I can see a few things. The path to the file share, any required permissions, in, in this case it's an SMB share, so I've got some Active Directory permissions configured. And if I click on Advanced, I can see some configuration options for taking advantage of the vSAN file services snapshot. I have the option to back up directly from the file share itself. This of course means that I will be placing extra performance hit on the file share from the backup job, but more importantly, any open files could potentially have file locks on them, meaning that the backup job is going to skip those files. Instead, I'll choose to back up from a storage snapshot and provide the hidden path to where the snapshot resides. Using VMware's PowerCLI and Veeam's PowerShell module, I'm able to programmatically create a new snapshot and insert the path to that hidden snapshot inside this field. Now let's take a look at the backup job itself. I can see that the data being protected in this job is in fact that SMB file share called Profiles. Under Advanced, clicking on the Scripts tab, I see that I've enabled a PowerShell script. This is the script mentioned previously that generates a new snapshot and then modifies the path of the SMB share, making the new snapshot the source for the backup job. As you can see, this script runs prior to the backup job, so every backup job has a new snapshot. Now that we know how the backup job was configured, let's take a look at the restore options available. I can see that this backup job currently has 13 restore points. I can see I have several options for restore. I can restore the entire file share from my most recent backup, I can roll back to a previous point in time, or I could restore individual files. The default view will show me the latest backup available for restore. Clicking on Selected, I can browse through the available restore points. I'm going to choose to restore from the latest backup. As for where to restore to, I've got a few options. I can just make a complete copy to an alternate location, or I can restore to the original location. I can choose to keep, which essentially will make an additional copy and rename the files, or I can overwrite the existing files. Since my files no longer exist, I'm going to choose to overwrite. Now quick verification, just to validate that in fact the files have been restored, and there they are. As you can see, with a little help from VMware's PowerCLI and Veeam's Backup PowerShell module, you're able to programmatically generate new snapshots and incorporate them into your backup jobs, making rapid, space-efficient backups with granular recovery options. 